Hey everybody, what's going on? Welcome back. It's another week. We're still alive. We're still breathing. That's always a plus. But you know, it's good for you guys too because you get to hear us talk again. And this week, I'm kind of excited to chat about um, this particular topic because it's very easy breezy, nonchalant. I'm looking forward to it. Nothing too stressful. Uh, last week we had the idea. If you guys didn't listen to that ep- episode. Uh, of just sort of taking a little time to spotlight some movies that we felt don't really get enough attention. Now, I know a lot of you guys are going to be film aficionados. So some of these you're going to be like, please. Of course I've seen that. Everybody has. The problem is, is no, everybody hasn't. Yeah. yeah. If you're if you're one of those people, you, <laughs> you know, I get it. Some of these are going to be like that. But, um, you know, I've got some genre stuff in here that uh, if you're not, maybe you're a super hardcore into horror but you're only casual in action maybe you haven't seen some of these or vice versa or whatever so um i think i have a decent mix i think there's i think i have some things in my list that are going to be things that obviously people have heard of but maybe never caught or maybe they're things that were of a certain pedigree like maybe uh they had a big production big director but for some mm. reason they just don't get talked about any yeah, you know yeah. for some reason mm. and then uh, hopefully i have a few in here that uh nobody's seen so we'll see before we get into our meat of our topic we usually just sort of shoot the breeze and see if we've got anything that's new if we uh maybe acquired anything new to chat about uh, and i'll take a second too to help welcome the, the folks in the chat and i want to remind everybody that you guys can all watch these live as we do them every tuesday 8 p.m central time uh, and if you can't totally understandable um they go up the following week in abridged form but for now i want to say hi to plemke what's up i want to say hi to will we're gonna go ahead and get going here uh, i don't think I, I honestly i think i can only think of one thing i got and it just came in the mail today so if you just kind of like casually roll into that and i got the highlander 4k it just it just came literally two hours ago Oh, and yeah. in, in one of the maybe it was Dawn of the Discs, one of these Facebook groups, they uh, shared that it was like down to 12 bucks. And it just, oh, I yeah, it just yeah. came out today. It, it, yeah. so it was a pre-order technically. And uh, yeah, they have they have steel books out there. There's a the Best Buy steel book, but this is literally half the price, if not more. I don't yeah. need a steel book, a Highlander. That's yeah. that's awesome. So I'm excited to re- revisit that because it's it's been a minute and I I it doesn't quite make the list, but I've always kind of felt that Highlander two got a little shit on for mm-hmm. for no reason. I get it. It's it's bat shit. I know it's not canon because I think it's it pretty much goes from like one and three and but two's all weird because it's all dystopian uh, Blade Runner future. It's totally non canon, but it's so bizarre and it's so off the wall that I can't help but kind of like it. I know it's yeah, not a no, absolutely. Movie. You've seen it. I, no, I haven't seen it recently. It's, it's whacked out. It's totally yeah. weird. It's like, it, like almost like they felt like, like they were going a totally different direction with the second one, and then it must have got some serious backlash. And like, hey, <laughs> that thing we did, uh, no, never mind. But it's yeah. just like weird. It's like a fever dream. Uh, but yeah. Anywho, what else was I gonna say? I want to remind everybody else too. If you're if you're brand new here, please take a second to help us out. Like YouTube video. Uh, please follow us on twitch.tv slash revival house if that's where you're watching us and subscribe if you haven't you know those algos merry christmas to us help us out give us some subs uh, is river man is there anything that you got recently or anything you want to talk about yeah i got a couple things that came in one today yeah as well so well go ahead i don't have anything oh, else okay. oh, i oh, wish okay. i had believe me, i wish i had a last Ronin NECA turtle to show you guys because I really want one of those, but alas, I do not have that. Go ahead. This I did pre order this and this uh, showed up today the Silent Night Deadly Night collection. From okay, Best did Ron. that drop today? Yeah, that just What's came out. What's the price of... point on that? Because I have never seen any of those shitty sequels. I think it was like uh, 17, I believe. I- I've never seen any of those sequels. Have you actually seen any of them? I've seen the third one. I mean, they're not great, they're not good at, but I mean, I. I don't know. You just, Something about this franchise. I, I like this uh, franchise. The too, novelty so. buy. Does I'll it, sit there and watch with, the shitty movies. Does it come with a digital too? Uh, I know Vest, Vestron mostly does that, but yeah, includes a digital copy. Yeah, I mean it's a total novelty. Uh, I don't know. I've never seen anything past the the clips and stuff, but I guess let me know how that works. 
Yeah. Or if you're not interested in the digital, I'll fucking sacrifice myself at no cost to myself. <laughs> for whatever. I'll, I'll I'll send you the digital. It's fine if you want that. Yeah, I've always wanted. I've always curiously wanted to watch the Mickey Rooney one. Yeah. <laughs> the like, uh, but you know, it is what it is. Is that all you got? Look no, the that. other one. The other one I got was what was that? No, go ahead. I blonde, uh, blonde, blind by. Um, I didn't really. I haven't even heard about this movie. It came out in the nineties. Um, I did some research on it. It was. It looks pretty interesting. Um, kind of a sci-fi esque um movie. The Steelbook is on sale, so I was like, I'll give it a shot. If it sucks, it sucks. But it's a uh, Gattaca. Yeah, I've never seen that either, and I'm not. I'm not the Ethan Hawke doesn't Ethan attract Hawk's, me as a leading man. He's okay, and then Uma Thurman's in it, so I was, I was kind of interested by the premise, though. I've come around on some Ethan Hawke movies. Like he's been in some good stuff I've watched before, mm-hmm. but uh, he's not a guy. I'm like, oh, I he his name isn't marquee for me. I don't watch a movie because Ethan Hawke's in it. It has. Mm-hmm. No, I'm with you on that. I think cut out. Did I cut out? No, I didn't. Yeah, yeah, you're back. I don't think I liked. Uh, was that a Linklater movie, The Before Sunrise? I liked that. Yeah, yeah. Of course, who doesn't like um, Training Day? Uh, I enjoyed Black Phone. I know Todd didn't. Uh, you know, there's a there's a there's movies here and there that are all right with. But so, welcome Mendoza to the chat. Hey, I want to go back to one of these comments here from Gamer Guy. Twelve bucks at Best Buy. That's where you got it. Are you talking about Highlander? Or are you talking about yeah, Silent Highlander. Night, Deadly Night. No, that was on Highlander. Was on Amazon, right? Yeah, that's what I'm saying. That if he's talking about Highlander, because maybe he maybe he got Silent Night, Deadly Night for twelve bucks. Maybe Todd got ripped off. <sighs> Wouldn't be the first time. Yeah. Anyway, I'm going to start trying to highlight some chats on here. I thought that was really cool. We were doing that on our last stream. You're, you're By the way, in your mic a little bit. By the way, I'm hissing. Yeah, it's hissing I'm harsh. I don't know if you have a connection that's kind of. I don't know. Maybe it's because I was grabbing it and holding yeah. it. Yeah. I'll stop doing it. Sensitive. I got it. One of one of these things that I got to hopefully one of these weeks as a new pickup, I'll I'll tell you guys I got a new audio interface because, you know, I've got a tried and true Scarlet Scarlet Focusrite. And uh, as great as it is, it's got a short in it somewhere and it causes me issues. And, and it's one of those things where I think it's had a short in it since day one and I never really noticed it. Uh, and of course I've had this thing for like three years now and I don't want to, I feel like it should last me longer. You ever like are stubborn? Like I don't want to buy a new one. Absolutely. It's absolutely. perfectly good yeah. except it has a short, which annoys me sometimes. And I know eventually I want to get a new one, but I kind of feel like I, I want, I want to get like five years out of it. I gotta, like, I, I gotta hit this magic number to feel like I got my money's worth. No, I hear you. But anyway, oh, that's right. Uh, Adrian, Mendoza stop, says, uh, don't stop yeah. holding it. Grab it. Don't 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 pull it, Harley. It's not your dick. Squeeze it. Speaking of movies, that should have been my list. <laughs> anyway, uh, is there anything else you want to talk about? Otherwise, we can kind of get into our list. And I, I no. have a way. So I don't know about you, but I I've got maybe half. I got a, I got a pretty good list and I don't I feel like we can kind of go through these pretty fast. So yeah. I, I, I felt okay having a robust selection. I don't know about you and how many you have. I've got about seven physical f- movies right here. Yeah. And the rest of them I'm going to switch over and I've got like pictures and stuff, right? I got about so, 10 physical, so. Okay, you have nothing else? You just want to go over physical on your end? Yeah, that's fine. Okay, so what we will do is... I guess we'll just go back and forth. I don't think it should be too messy if I'm the only one that's going to share my screen for a minute. Uh, let me just get. Let me get. Hmm. How do I. Hey, really quick, Todd. I'm a boomer. So I know I can share my screen when I have like a browser, but I have a folder with my pictures. How do you do it? You just double click on them and then make them full size and then share your screen. Yeah, but do you do that though? But like, then you won't be able to see yourself, right? Because whenever I do the tier list, I can do a different browser, and I can just uh, share just that browser. You can't do that. Or no, I have two. About... Mo- I have two monitors. Oh, that's right, because you're a bougie bitch. I got rid of my second monitor. Um, anyway, I guess maybe I can't do that. Then whatever, we'll do the best I can. 
no big deal. All right, so we're going to start off. Uh, I'm going to let Todd start. Yeah, so the first movie I picked, it's it's known in the horror community, but it's not it's not put over as much as it should be. Um, this is one that was kind of early release for Blu-ray. Um, a fantastic release. Um, one of my favorites, of course, it has um, two of the greats, uh, Sam Raimi and uh, Urs Campbell. And that's, Intruder. Oh, that's easy intruder. Yeah. Yeah. So this movie is not talked about enough. Um, it's fantastic. It's so much fun. Uh, I don't know if it's because I used to work in a grocery store growing up, but, um, this movie just, I don't know, man, it's just, uh, something you throw on when you're, uh, have a few buddies over, want to watch a horror movie. It's a, it's a perfect, uh, horror movie like that. It's good. And fun facts, Todd tried to cheat me out of my copy of that. So is that a synapse release? I can't remember. Yeah. Synapse. So Todd, that's, that's where your copy originated from too. Back when we first started, we were getting screeners and shit like that for review. And Todd was like hoarding it. He got like two copies. And he wasn't, he would get double copies and stuff like, no, I, you know, I, uh, no, I don't, I didn't get double copies. No, I just, one came with a DVD, one came with a Blu-ray. I don't know what the DVD is. So like, I thought you had that. Maybe not. No, 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 no. I, I remember correctly. Trust me. Cause that's where I got mine. Right. Okay. So you were getting sent doubles and then I went to your house in Omaha <laughs> and I saw your collection of stuff. You had doubles and you were hoarding it. I'm like, what? And you had like double copies. And you were pulling this fucking thing where you were flipping the second ones, which is immoral, by the way. <laughs> but you were anyway. I'm like, this should be mine. Like, what the hell? And so I took you. I, I had already missed out. Like, I want to say maybe I missed out on stuff like Frank and Hooker that you'd already flipped. I don't remember. Maybe I'm getting that wrong. But I know I didn't get copies of those. No, I still have extra, that. But you had an extra copy of uh, Intruder, and I took it. So that's where I got my copy. I didn't buy it. Oh, okay. So okay. anyway, I think Intruder's great as well. So um, next, uh, the, I guess what I'll do is, let me see. I'm trying to, should I sort mine by genre? I guess I'll start with action. My my first film is, if if you're casual action, you might not know it. If you're not into like B action. If you're not into action at all, you're probably not going to know it, of course. Uh, if you're even remotely really into action, you're going to know Scott Atkins. But I feel like, he deserves to be he's the king of the b-list he's the king of the b-list action movies those vod uh action films he gets to he gets little bit parts in a lot of a movies right just little bit parts you know but as far as his starring vehicles he's got lots of good ones and don't get me started he's got a lot of shit ones too but that kind of comes to the territory when you're straight to video action but i gotta say man i think as far as i don't know if it's his best it's up there but this hands down has the best choreography, the best fight scenes. And that's Ninja 2, man. Shadow of a Tear. Yeah, it's a great, yeah. Great it's movie. fucking awesome. It is a feast for the eyes. And if I remember correctly, it's 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 much better than the first one. I think it's kind of a reboot of the first one. If you've seen the first Ninja with him in it as well. Mm -hmm. yeah. I don't think you have to watch the first one if you've seen this one. And this one's just, you know, balls the wall. It's all action, no story, just the way I like it with these fucking movies. Uh, and it's fantastic. And that's an Isaac Florentine joint. He's sort of a champion of straight to video action flicks, too. So I like it. I do recommend your turn. Yeah. So this one, I, I don't know when I picked this up. I, I watched it as a kid and I, I, I liked it as a kid. And then I, I got it probably within like a handful of years ago and rewatched it and it, it held up. I still enjoyed it. I mean, it's kind of a comedy slash um, it's not really drama. It's mostly comedy, um, but it, it takes place in like uh, the 1960s and uh, pretty much around wartime in uh, Key West, Florida. Um, and a guy comes around uh, to each of the towns and he pretty much shows uh He's a producer. He, he starts showing uh, movies to different towns and theatrical film roles, and that would be Matinee with John Goodman. Oh, wow. Yeah, I've never seen it. I've heard of it. Yeah, a lot of fun. Um, it's it's not like a movie that's blow you away by any, any stretch, but this is a movie you can pop on and just uh, relax to and uh, veg out to, I think. Um, Joe Dante, like I said, uh, directed it, and uh, 
yeah, John Goodman's the one of the main main stars in it, and he's pretty funny. So I really enjoy this movie. Oh, that's awesome, man! And I and by the way, while 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 he was talking, I was able to figure out. Uh, I have boomer tendencies. I was able to figure out my share screen. So when I do when I do get to where I need to get, but I'm going to go ahead and burn through all my physical stuff. No, but I, I I would like to watch that too. Uh, that seems like just one of those movies that I bet you I'd love and that I just missed. Kind of like um, Stay Tuned, right? That John Ritter yep. movie. I like that, that movie too. That's one of those movies, like Saturday afternoon features mm-hmm. that I'd watch when I was like in kindergarten and nobody talks about it, which I didn't put that on my list. But that's that's one of those movies that I love. Um, no, and so, and it's something about those types of flicks that were big theatrical movies they had budgets they had big studios behind them but just got swept under the rug it kind of makes them more alluring for me you know oh, yeah because those are really rare when you come across like a big studio flick that feels like a hidden gem that just feels unheard of today mm-hmm. uh, another movie i would think about and this isn't on my list a movie i saw recently called white sands right with willem dafoe and mickey rourke I, I couldn't believe i had never seen that because i feel like i've gone through all those fucking types of movies where uh, back in the day, before before streamers, we Hollywood used to make a lot of this like I don't want to say shovelware, but mid budget, lower budget, right studio films, mm-hmm. yep. and that's the kind of shit that was just flooded not on Netflix but on like Cinemax. We'd find that stuff all over Cinemax because you know they got destroyed in the theaters and overshadowed by the big blockbusters. And I kind of miss that. Now it's like. You can name all on one hand all the movies that are in theaters, and it's all they're all like three hundred million dollar movies. Everything else is buried somewhere on a streamer. But um, I'm going to yeah, I'm going to stick with action a little bit. I'm going to save that one a little bit actually because okay, this one, like I said, everything applies to what I said last time about this. If you're anywhere deep into action, you're going to know these flicks. But if you're just casual. I, I, dude, Brandon Lee only had a few flicks, right? He only yeah. had a few movies. He had this Showdown, in Little Tokyo, which easily could be on this list too. Uh, but I've talked about it so fucking much. This is even more under the radar than Showdown, and of course, The Crow. Have you ever watched this? No, I have. I don't think I've seen that. Oh yeah, it's 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 really good. I mean, it is a. Uh, it's a by the numbers type of action story, but that's that's most action movies, unless you're Terminator Two or something. But I love it. This is like horror for me, where I don't know. I I tend to expect a little more out of horror these days, but action, I don't know what it is, man. I'm a big old softy. Like just give me what I want. Give me my ABC. Guy gets his family killed. Guy loses his girlfriend. Guy has to kick ass, whatever it is, and and kill the bad guy, who's mm-hmm. probably some sort of drug cartel. I'm happy with that, you know, because when it comes to action movies, I just want shitty dialogue. Like, I don't know. It's the only genre where I really just give a pass with its bad dialogue, hammy dialogue. Oh, yeah. Uh, absolutely. Um, I just want to be entertained with the action. That's that's pretty much what I want. I just want just larger than life heroes and stuff like that. And kid you not, Brandon Lee is not a good actor. Now, he might have been able to got to have gotten there, but I think he obviously was taken too soon. But, um, you know it shows i like his cheesy line delivery and if you guys have seen showdown little tokyo it's on display there in full form right you know uh you have the right to remain dead be dead or whatever it's just bullshit and this also has powers booth which he's a great character actor obviously you know him from tombstone bye you know yeah he's in a lot of stuff frailty right he's great in that uh but but fantastic and and i have to also say this this movie why can't I fucking think of the – it's on the tip of my tongue. The soundtrack is by Neil Sean. His, he had an 80s cock rock band. And, uh, God, I'm, I don't know why I can't fucking think of it. I have to, I have to look it up real quick. No, that's fine. Uh, yeah. Neil Sean, 80s side project. I want to get this album, dude, but I just can't find it. It's not in print. It's um, – <laughs> what do we have here hold on the fuck man sorry guys I'm, I have to figure this out I and I can't spit out the name because it always reminds me of Fastway because it's very much like a fastway oh. type soundtrack, and yeah. 
and I always want to spit out fast way. And so let me see here. Hardline. <laughs> That's the mm. thing. It's called Hardline. And if you watch the movie, it's just it's just really good. It's really good, just 80s butt rock, and it sets a tone. Super super cheesy, dude. You could as as you can imagine, he gets the girl at the end, and they're just blasting that song on the last scene. It's just great, man. Good shit. Go ahead, Todd. My next one is um, horror comedy, and it was actually made back in the forties. And this one is um, two two of the most funniest people um, out there. And of course, it's probably really well known, but nobody talks about it. Alvin Costello, oh, Frankenstein. Really? People talk about that. I mean, in the horror community, I mean, it's more comedy than horror, but I mean, yeah, just I, the fact that they made all these Universal Monster uh, uh, comedy movies, they're okay, fantastic. It's definitely not mainstream, and people aren't talking about it today, I guess, in the younger circle, so you're right. But but yeah, I guess if you do deep dives and stuff like that, I, I, I've heard it got get referenced a lot, but I guess that's still, we're talking more niche. That's just, If you're listening to like a Mick Garris podcast or something like you're listening to these old timers and stuff. They're going to talk about it, but yeah, no, that's a great one too. Um, yeah. And it, I mean, it has all the usual cast of characters as Wolfman, Dracula, uh, Frankenstein. Uh, I mean, it has Bella Gosi, Cheney, all of those. So, and it's hysterical. It's just a lot of fun. Uh, uh, I'm trying to see how, how big of a budget uh okay so this did make some money in the box office back in the 40s it was a big deal in the day a couple million know? yeah <clears throat> so but i don't know there's something about this movie i just really enjoy it it's i'm i feel like a lot of these picks that i'm doing it's just movies I'll, i could throw in uh at any time and just uh watch 10 minutes of it or watch the whole thing and still enjoy it so no i feel you man okay so that that's a good one actually i think in, i think when you're getting that old you can you can bring it up because even if it was big in the day, eventually time forgets, which mm -hmm. is kind of sad. But eventually time will forget everything. Uh, you know, obviously the biggest stuff will last the longest, but there might be a day where the world forgets about the Beatles. Even you know, yeah. you jump yeah. three, four hundred years in the future, you know, it might just it, it might just be all forgotten. Uh, side note, Todd, that's why I think the Pantera tribute reunion thing that's going on right now is a good thing because. People were starting to forget about Pantera. I get it; oh, they yeah, have a absolutely. legacy, but yeah. they it wasn't it wasn't crossing over into the new generation. The younger kids were not listening to Pantera. It was kind yeah. of sticking with like our demo. So mm. the fact that they're getting out there again and just that's great. Absolutely. Their stuff will forget. People will forget. Time will forget. And so uh, hopefully they don't forget some of these movies. Um, I, I kind of hate bringing this up because we've talked about this damn movie so much, but. How could I not put it on here, man? I just I have to beat it in your skulls, everybody. Watch Desert Heat for crying out loud. It and it might feel like it's not an underlooked movie, overlooked movie because we talk about it so much. But who else talks about this movie besides our our fucking podcast? Nobody. Nobody. It's awesome. I bet you when we met Trejo, I was the only person that brought up Desert Heat. <laughs> you know, it, it's just the way it goes. But this movie, John J. Alveson. John G. Alveson, sorry, director of Rocky and director of Karate Kid. He comes back swinging with something better than both of those movies combined. <laughs> Desert Heat. Uh, it's great, man. And you have uh, John G. Alveson alumni, Pat Morita, yeah. Arnold himself. And it's great. And by great, I mean bad. It's not a good movie. It's a shit movie, but it's a good bad movie. It's so easily to so easy to digest. So easy a lot of good one-liners, yeah. Oh, yeah. It's just every scene is one-liners. Every scene is memorable. It's just one of those really good, bad movies, right? Mm -hmm. And I think it's definitely one of those ones that wasn't trying to be bad. And that's when you know it's magic. <laughs> yeah. And, and if they would have missed the mark on that, it would have felt like just some made-for-USA TV movie or something. That's the way it kind of always feels like to me. But it's just, got, it's just got too much going for it, man. You've got Jean-Claude Van Damme threesomes. You you got him uh, mm -hmm. propositioning an old woman to be next as she, when mm -hmm. he, when he watches her being a voyeur through the window, you've got uh, you got the old man full of dangly ones right because oh. he lots of and you have you have Pat Morita saying I bet he gets lots of pussy and then him going ah oh, man you know I fucking love it dude it's got a great cast of characters including Jim Hanks oh that's okay. true yeah. yeah Buford's Beach Bunnies himself and uh, Lee Turgeson. 
Lee Turgeson, he is Hollywood's best kept secret that somehow just missed out on a great career. Uh, he was obviously the lead in Oz, and he played Chet on the um, what's it called TV show of uh, Weird Science. Such mm-hmm. a great actor, and he just he just never really made a. He's still a character actor, and he shows up and stuff. But dude, he was on Oz when this movie came out, and he has one line. He's one of the people in the biker gang, and he's the guy that says, "Why don't you sit on my lap? We'll talk about the first thing that pops up." Ah. <laughs> <laughs> that's his only line yeah, yeah, and i'm like yeah. this is the guy that is holding down on oz fucking emmy winning award show. It, it, it felt like he was so underused um yes mendoza that's right jim hanks buford's beach bunny himself go ahead <laughs> that is a good one by the way uh, my, <laughs> awesome. my, yeah sp- my next one is a comedy um so this this one came out i want to say maybe in the past 15 years and it's the premise was so stupid when it first, you know, was first announced, and I didn't have high hopes. Um, but again, it's a movie, a comedy sci fi movie, um, that pretty much deals with um, one of my favorite topics that I uh, research quite a bit. Um, and that's uh, you know, like parallel universes and time travel. So, um, you, you should know what it is, Aaron. Oh, yeah, yeah, go ahead. Hot tub time machine. Yeah, that's a great movie. It's it's just a fun movie. Uh, you would never think it's just the stupidest premise, but uh, uh, Rob but I do Poetry, feel like it has its cult audience. I feel like it's you think so. See, I I, I I didn't. I don't know that. I so. think it's one of those. I think it's because it's as modern as it is. But I think if we were to jump about ten years, twenty years in the future, it would easily be forgotten about. Uh, yeah. But I, it's it. I think it's got like a weird following to it. But uh, no, it's such a great time. Chevy Chase is actually funny in it because he's. I think he's a fucking pill in real life. I don't think he's he's such a yeah. curmudgeon. But uh, Craig Robinson's funny. You have uh, John Cusack. I mean, you have a cast of characters, and it's just it's just a fun time. And don't bother with the second cool. one. It's terrible, dude. It's so bad. Yeah, don't watch the second one. I lose you. Aaron, did My Aaron? Oh, you're no, back. I'm I'm back. I'm gonna have to give me a second. Yeah, I'm getting really irritated with this, and I, I'm about to, like I said, I'm gonna have a new internet game in town. Uh, so I'm hopefully gonna switch to them. But there's something going on, dude. My shit drops out, and it's fucking annoying as hell. So I keep having to edit this shit out. But what? And I'm gonna edit this out. But what's more annoying too is that Metallica tier list we did, where I was just mm-hmm. plagued the whole time. Yeah, fucking, it sucks, dude. I just, I, it's just. There's just so much audio problems and lag. Uh, it just it's almost unwatchable, and it really makes me mad because I was really happy to do that. And you know, talking about, I thought I thought they downloaded, in so the I couldn't figure it out. Yeah, oh. I was able to download local recordings, which is great, but it didn't help me in that case because it doesn't appear like this it's literally just isolated videos. So the only way I could do it is if I edit it. You know spliced us talking which is great but i could have did that where i i'm trying to think oh and then i have the isolated tearless video but then like i would have had to have been really tricky with the editing and then you wouldn't have been able to see us during the 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 actual tearless portion and then it was going to be a fucking mess syncing the audio because the audio was a problem too because then i had the separate audio files but dude i just wasn't I wasn't ready to fucking tackle that that beast. Um, so anyway, but hopefully I'm I'm good here. But I'm gonna edit this out too. So thanks for being patient, guys. What did I just? What did we just talk about? What was the last thing we just talked about? Because I make Hot little notes. Time machine. Oh yeah, yeah. But don't don't bother um, don't bother watching that sequel, man. No, I don't know why terrible. they did that. And glad uh, good call on Kusak for not fucking doing that shit. Wasn't it just Cordry. I think it was everybody except him. Oh, but okay. Anyway, Good. um, so I'm gonna go ahead and uh, I'm gonna give you guys a twofer, a twofer, and I I, I probably should have, I, sh- I probably should have put these all in order with uh, the first thing I showed you guys, but whatever. I'm gonna stay on the Atkins strain, baby. This is one of my favorite Sean Atkins, uh, not Sh- Scott Atkins. I'm sorry, Sean Aston. It's one of my favorite Sean Aston action movies. Uh, <laughs> No, uh, dude, Undisputed 3. Now, 
it's possible you guys might know Undisputed One because that's the one that was actually in theaters. And because wh- what Scott Atkins is really big in, he's done a lot of straight to video sequels of theater movies with different actors, right? Like Scott Atkins did the it came out a few years ago, Hard Target 2, right? For example, he'll do shit like that. It's not as bad as like Larry the Cable Guy in Jing All the Way to, like, but it's that kind of thing. Anyway, the first Undisputed was in theaters. I don't think it was a big hit or anything, but it must have made enough money in home video rentals to warrant them pumping out all these direct-to-video sequels. And the first movie starred Wesley Snipes and Ving Rhames. And, you know, it's good, too. But in the second one, man, they uh, it, it was Michael Jai White in the protagonist role, mm. which part two is really good, too. And... Scott Atkins is the bad guy. He's the enemy. He's like the Drago. And he plays a Russian named Boyka. And it's awesome. Now, his character went over so well with sort of the action action fan base that they made him the star of three. So he's actually the protagonist of part three. And it's just fantastic. Some awesome. It, it's about um, it's about a Russian prison and it's kind of a tale as old as time where the prison has some fight and cage matches and shit like that. It's kind of crooked or whatever. And he's kind of like the, the Tong Po. He's the fucking champion, man. So if you just want a, a, a decent story, but just awesome fight scenes, fucking just either, I would say you could watch Undisputed 2 or 3. They're both great. And if you want to watch 2, you get Michael Jai White as well. So, which he's awesome. I love him. I, I don't think Blood I've seen 3. I, Blood and Bone's good. Yeah. Blood and Bone's good. What you've seen this? You've seen Undisputed Three? I think I've no. I think I've seen two. Michael J. White. Yeah, they're they're both really good. And he has a fourth one too called Boyko, which is also good as well. I mean, but I think two and three are the are the pinnacle. But go ahead. And we have it. I think the last action movie I'll talk about is the fucking greatest of them all. So, but I'll I'll hold off. Go ahead, Todd. So my next one is one that I believe came out. Let's see. Three uh, four years ago now, what 2019? So, yeah, um, this is one oh, I was kind of just wasn't on my radar at all. And, um, the director is very well known, but, um, I didn't hear a whole lot about it. Like, people talked about it for maybe a weekend and then it just kind of went by the wayside with a lot of people. Um, some people hated it and some people love it. Um, the style, the filmmaking, it's phenomenal. Uh, this director is probably the best best horror director there is right okay. now. Okay. Um, and I I just love both of these performances in in this movie. It's uh, you're basically um, you're with these two characters for the whole movie in one setting, and that's the Lighthouse. See, I, I slept on it. I still didn't watch it. Yeah this this movie is very very unique stylistically. It's black and white. It's two men that are pretty much in a lighthouse for a four weeks, and it's just fucking nuts. Hold on, no, that movie is not unoverlooked. Oh it's yeah, talked about all fucking time. No, 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 uh huh. All I people talk. They, I think they legit did an SNL skit off of it. No way. I, I've with the whole farting and stuff, and you know I, that movie gets dude. That 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 was a ne- that was the left. I would contest that that's not overlooked at all, but I mean, you could still shine a spotlight on it. What do you guys think, Mendoza or Plemke or whoever in the chat? Uh, do you, would you guys? Do you guys, don't you guys think this Lighthouse gets not, talk not about a, a mainstream lot? movie at all? It's not. It's not a mainstream, but it gets. It's. I don't know. It's. I don't hear it's the artsy horror farsy. community. It's, I don't hear the horror community talking about it at all. I don't know because I, I honestly think it's sort of crossed over. Into more of a, a it's well, not just a horror movie. Yeah, I didn't yeah. realize it was really a horror movie. To be honest with you, I know well, I know obviously it, the witch and shit like that, but I didn't really it's psychological, that. you know, everything like that. And it's just bad shit. But it's, I mean, I just call it that because of the director. So, um, but I can see why people wouldn't think it's a horror movie. But I, it's one movie I don't hear anybody really talk. I hear everybody talk about the witch, uh, the Northman, of course, um, but. Not the lighthouse. The lighthouse kind of came and went, if you ask me. Really? 
I'm gonna see what it pulled in box office actually. Eh, yeah, I guess it wasn't like too big of a hit box office wise. I mean, it had a budget of 11 million, which is a lot more than The Witch, and it made 18.3. I wonder if that's just domestic though. I don't know, man. I feel like everybody fucking talked about that movie, but it was on so many year ends. But I don't know. What do I know? I still need to watch it though. I love Willem Dafoe, man. Um, and you know, I'm sold on Pattinson now. I don't know why. I just that I I. I didn't want to watch it because people wouldn't shut up about the movie. That's how I know about the movie so much. It was so everywhere. But see, that's that's well, we must be hanging out in the wrong different circles then, because I didn't hear anybody. <laughs> well, I gotta watch it anyway, regardless. What would you rank it out of okay. ten? Huh? I think I gave it an eight. Okay, eight, you like eight it or nine. Than I... Uh, yeah. Okay. Is it better than the Northman, which I still haven't watched? I, I keep forgetting about it. Uh, it. They're all different, so it's it's just hard. I mean, stylistically, I mean, you could tell the director, okay. but it, it's right, hard well, because I mean, it's the three three great movies. It's like, yeah. All right, so my next one, by definitely by a mainstream director nowadays for sure. Um, I don't know how many people that watch the the mainstream flicks of this of this director know of this movie i'm sure a lot of people listening to this have probably heard of the movie and maybe even seen the movie but definitely not mainstream it definitely got overlooked and it definitely wasn't a hit in the theaters and it was his follow i'm gonna give you some hints todd let's see if you can guess it Mm -hmm. his first movie out of the gate was a hit it was fairly low budget but it was a big hit and this was his follow-up movie, which I'm I'm assuming just got overshadowed and underperformed. He ended up coming back because he went to the horror. This isn't a horror movie. He started in horror. He came out. It was a huge hit. He branched out and did this. It wasn't horror, but it was exploitation in a, in a sense, violence and shit. Uh, it didn't go very well for him, and then he just dove right back into horror, and he's sort of been reigning ever since on a, on a commercial level. I'll give you another uh, hint. James Wan. Yeah. Yeah. Death Sentence. Yeah. Right? Which was originally a Death Wish movie, right? Mm-hmm. It, I think it might have been a Death Wish remake, actually. It was a script they pulled from a pile, Death Wish remake. And they changed it. You know, he's not Charles Bronson. They changed his Death Sentence. But it's so obviously still being used as a homage, right? with the title and everything else, but it's the same thing. It's the exact same thing. And just like action movies, man, I don't really want much out of a revenge movie, to be honest with you. I just, no, I, I'm, I'm with you on that. I, I just want bad shit happening to a good guy and him going sour and doing bad shit back. That's kind of all I want. And this movie is really good. And uh, if I was going to give you another hint too, that it also had another actor that you mentioned earlier, John Goodman, because he, uh, he plays the arms dealer guy, right? The guy he gets all his weapons from. Yeah, but what a what a great flick, and I haven't watched it in a while. I actually, I actually might watch this here soon because it's just been a minute. But and who knew, like pff, Kevin Bacon in a role like this? <laughs> I don't know, just I, unlikely. I remember seeing that the DVD of Blockbuster all the time too. I, I did rent it a few times, but so you yeah. have seen it? Oh, absolutely, I've seen yeah, it. Good yeah, flick. yeah, yeah. I, 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 it's one. Of, most of these movies I'm talking about are probably not going to get 4K releases. They just don't. Let no. I, I think. I don't think Death Sense is going to get a 4K release. That's just me, unless James Wan puts out some sort of box set or something later down the road. But James Wan ended up doing a Fast and Furious movie. You know that shows you how far he came. Um, my next one is it's one I actually I think I saw that this past year. Um, it, it was a blind buy, and I ordered it off of a Kino sale. Um, this one. This one just blew me away how, I mean, this is in in my list for like a nine and a half out of ten. That's how much I love this movie. Um, I only watched it once because I, I have the syndrome where I, I, I like to watch the movie once. And then if it blows me away, I'm just kind of sitting on it because I don't want to go back and be like, okay, so I didn't like this part of this part. Um, but yeah, this one, I it's it takes place in the, the 60s. Um, the movie came out, I believe, in the. Did it did it drop in 
1979. So it's uh, the late 50s, early 60s, uh, New York City. Um, you have the uh, gangs in in the high schools and everything like that. So this this basically has to this revolves around drugs, um, high school gangs, um, all the good stuff, all the fun stuff, like the coming of age stuff. And uh, I love the the whole greaser mentality, like the movie Grease. Um, I, I love like the jackets and I love the songs, but there's no, no singing in this, but uh, it's uh, the Wanderers. Oh, okay. I was, I was stuck on the year because you said it came out in 79. I'm like, what movie is that? I had other things floating around in my brain. That's cool, yeah. man. Yeah. I've never watched it. This I, and I, I had no expectations going into it. I just, I got off a of Kino sale and I was like, Holy shit. This movie is awesome. Like I, I really love this movie. So uh, wait, did yeah. you just recently watch it? Yeah, a uh, past year. So okay. for the first time, it was it was one of those things, and I've I've never heard anybody talk about it. I just saw it on Kino and a Kino sale and uh, picked it up. So I'm gonna yeah, add if, that if, to my if, list right now. Yeah, if you're into like the '50s, late '50s, early '60s, like the gangs, and this movie's like not politically correct at all. So there's a lot of uh, you know racial slurs and stuff like that. But I mean, that was the sign of the times, you know. So um, oh, I, you know, I already had this in my list. Okay. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, the Wanderers are, are one of the gangs and everything. So, um, and then they have to deal with rival gangs, but it, it just revolves around this, this one gang and a bunch of, bunch of group of friends. And it's just a really cool movie, man. Uh, yeah. It's a Philip Kaufman joint. I had put, yeah. I had put that in my list, you know, cause he did uh, the seventies snatchers mm-hmm. body snatchers movie. And he did that uh, rising sun movie with Wesley Snipes and yeah. Yeah. So I, I'll have to get around to watching that too. Oh, my mom's in the chat. She just watched that the other day. She said, I watched it two days ago. Oh, nice. You watched The Wanderers? Nice. You didn't invite Aaron? What did you think, Denise? Did you enjoy it? She's like, it sucked. <laughs> no. <laughs> it was good. All right, so I, I think this is my last action movie I'm going to assault you guys with. And I, I saved, I think, the best for last. Not only is this... Everybody involved with this movie, not only is it in their top five, like everybody in this, it's one of their best movies. It not, and not only is it the best in the series it comes from, it's also the greatest fight scenes in any movie. I challenge me. Oh, my mom loved the movie, by the way, Todd. There you go. I know Rambo Rambo four is one of the greatest action movies ever made, but there's no fighting in Rambo. There's guns. This is fighting, man. This is just like fist to face. There is no better, no better fight choreography. And there's something that happened in the last 15 years where um, a lot of these direct to video or VOD films, they started casting a lot of MMA fighters in roles. You know, back in the day, they would have stunt people. And they would do a lot of cuts and shit like that. Like I love movies like Bloodsport. I love, uh, you know, I love a lot of that stuff. But you watch them now, and they're a little dated. A lot of cutaways, a lot of pulling punches. You know, you could see it. It's not. They they started hiring a lot of MMA fighters, man, for a lot of these like gritty action movies, and and they're just they take a lot of the fucking hits, man. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like there's there's less cutaways. It's brutal. You can fill every just bruise, man, and. I just can't say enough about this movie. I don't know if Todd's ever watched it. Uh, no, I don't. Is that the one with, uh, no, that's not the one I saw. Universal Soldier Day of Reckoning. This is the fourth one. Oh, okay. Right. There's Regeneration, which is the third I one. I, yeah, I saw Regeneration. Regeneration was good. I, I, I was surprised. Like, oh, wow. Cause when Regeneration came out, the last time I had been familiar with Universal Soldier was the second one with fuck with Goldberg. You know, with all the cheesy one-liners, and it's, it's not good. And then they came out with that, and it's like they just totally rebooted it, like made it gritty. And that one's good. It gets really good in the last act. This movie, totally different. This yeah. movie is balls to the wall, front to back, awesome. And it's a completely different. I, it, it's almost like none of them are connected. They all, they, they feel like every, all four of these movies feel like standalone canons, right? Mm-hmm. Um, or they kind of all kind of offshoot from the original, but they don't acknowledge the previous sequel. This one is wild, man. And this one, Jean-Claude Van Damme's the bad guy. And Scott Atkins is the main good guy. And he wakes up with amnesia. 
that's all you have to know and mm. it, basically it's great because you, you you're pretty much experiencing this movie through his lens they don't let you as the audience know any more than scott atkins does so you're just as sort of confused and along for the ride too and dude it has some of the i, I just i can't i can't talk about it enough it you have to watch this i'll, I'll this, watch it i mean for me as far as just getting the job done action movies maybe top five Dude, really? it's, it's it's so great, man. So many great. There is a fight scene between, <laughs> between Scott Atkins and one of these Universal Soldiers that's played by a big ass MMA dude uh, in a sports store. <laughs> it's it's so good. And like I said, these guys are just getting walloped, man. They're just taking it for the camera. And uh, Dolph Lundgren, he's in it. He's in it for just one scene. But dude, it is so good. It's awesome. And the fight scene between him and Dolph, dude, I. I can't say enough about it. I gotta, I gotta watch this too, dude. Look at this, look at the back of this man. Um, <laughs> see, look at Dolph and John Claude Van Damme, Jeez. dude. It's oh, like, man. uh, yeah, it's like tapping into some, you know, fucking, I don't know, crazy shit. stuff. Yeah, it's good, dude. It's it's crazy. I actually really want you to watch this because it's kind of a crime you have it do you have the uh digital or do you have they it? didn't come with digitals man i wish it did like look at that shit bullshit mm. the it, the i don't know a lot of these companies do who put this out this is a sony but this is also pretty old yeah i just didn't have a digital unfortunately gotcha but check if it's streaming man this is the kind of movie that might be on maybe it'll be on tubi or something but it's it's worth a rent if you can't like find it on the cheap or something on Blu-ray. Nice. Uh, so my next one is one. Uh, it's a sequel to one of my favorite uh, favorite films. We, we talked about all the time. Um, the sequel, Ghoulies Two. No, nobody talks about. Um, it's a sequel that I I've watched a couple times now. I really really enjoy it. Um, it doesn't have the same characters as the first one, but it does have the same style, the same present, pr the same, you know, um, it, the same feel of it. And I don't know if they're using the same cameras because it sure feels a lot like it. Um, first one's way better, but uh, this one is really entertaining. What's I think. the year? Give me, let me play a game. Come on. What was the year of the first one? And what's the year of this one? First one was, I believe it was 90 and this was 96. Mm, same director for both no okay my ducks too no, that was 96 i don't know go ahead my ducks 3 uh, was 96 uh, go ahead i'm sorry did is the same director no no no. the first one was 86 i don't know i was thinking 90 oh uh, slap shot dude i don't know go ahead no no no, no. <laughs> come on it's henry 2 Oh, oh serial dude, killer. I've never seen that. Is that really good, honestly? I enjoy it. It's like watching an Unsolved Mysteries episode. Really? Yeah. Um, I have the DVD of it. and I've it always never, avoided it like the plague, dude. I, I just... <laughs> because, it, I don't know, I look at it, and I'm just like, it can't be good. Because, it, you know, it's, it's next to the first one, and it's just... I don't know. It's, it just looks like Junior in Love to me. It's it's entertaining, man. It's uh, the main guy uh, who plays Henry... Is actually the the guy from Seinfeld that bootlegs the movie. Yeah, yeah. Remember? <laughs> yeah, he he's the main guy, and it's just I don't know, Definitely. just something about it. Uh, it's it's pretty uh, pretty twisted too. It's not as bad as the first one, but um, I I just enjoy this. I don't know why. If I wish it came out on like Blu-ray or something, I think maybe in Germany something came out, but uh, not here in the states. So that's one I I will pick up if it ever uh, does see the light of day. Okay, yeah, that's that's pretty wild. I wasn't expecting mask that. of you, sanity. I feel like yeah, mask. I feel like you've never talked about it. <laughs> no, <laughs> yeah. I haven't. All right, the last movie in my physical list here. Um, I, this is not unlike James Wan. This is a director that went on to do very, 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 very <laughs> big and commercial things. And hold on, got to deal with the bots. Uh, and I can't say I, I like the shit he did after this because he went on to do the Fast and the Furious franchise, right? Yeah. But this is Justin Lin's debut movie, Better Luck Tomorrow. I've always oh. thought it was a great indie flick. 
uh, you know, just great character development. It's 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 very much independent, right? It's just a good story with all these characters about high school kids. It's about an Asian community uh, inside a U.S. high school, right? And they all kind of hang together. They do the debates, and you know, uh, it's it's a coming of age type movie. They basically all start getting into trouble, start doing illegal activities and stuff like that. Because who would who would who would assume the 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 Asian kids with great grades? Right, that are getting scholarships and stuff like that. But it's a cool movie, man. I've always really, really dug it. And it's got uh it's got Harold from Harold and Kumar in it too. I that's one I haven't seen. I will when did that come out? What year? Oh gosh, it's uh two thousand three. Okay. And it was an MTV uh production, MTV Ooh. movies, MTV films, or like Angus. Yeah. Was that it was Angus was Angus MTV? Yeah. Yeah. It's a good movie though. I, I really like it. I'm a sucker for it. It's it's got it doesn't it doesn't have budget to rely on. It's not an action movie, so it's just all about the story. So I dig it. Um, go ahead. How many more do you have, by the way? Was that your last one? I've got ones I'll show in a folder that I'll. Okay. If you don't have that many more, I'll I'll kind of go fast on my my other ones. But I honestly, I've got ten more I can show in slides. Okay. Um, I'll just do one more, then we'll do honorable mentions. Oh, Damn, oh! I didn't know we we're gonna do honorable mentions because these some of these aren't honorable mentions. Some oh, these okay, my, my okay. Well, then we won't do honorable mentions because I, I mean, I've already been, went through what nine. Okay, well then go ahead and do your last one, and I'll just kind of spit fire and go through my last ones. Uh, my last one is from a one of the greatest horror directors, you know, ever. Um, this this movie came out in the seventies. Um, nobody really talks. Well, people talk about it here and there, not mainstream at all. Um, really creeped me out when I first watched it a um, handful of years back. Um, it's it, it kind of uh, what was that? Did it, yeah, X was that X or Pearl that kind of ripped off a little bit of this? Uh, X um, had some uh, um, influence from this movie because um, you know Toby Hooper with Texas Chainsaw Massacre uh -huh. um, was really really you know what X was. Uh, he tried to you know stylize and you know go around at go around that with x but uh, this one is of course the killer croc or the killer alligator is you know alive. eating alive okay yeah the toby hooper film came out in what 76 i i don't know i just i really really this atmosphere is just creepy as hell uh the lighting is so weird um background music the noise it's really unsettling and watching this movie i i don't know something about it man it's uh very very underrated in my opinion and uh i wish uh people would give it some more cred no that's cool i i haven't seen it so i have some homework to do too um so me all right so i am not going to share screen on these because yeah i did turns out i didn't conquer my boomer tendencies yet but i'm just going to talk about them and you guys can google them i don't give a shit uh, so the first one, um, I'm going to save the horror for last. No, I won't. I'm going to do a comedy. Uh, this is obviously by one of the greatest directors that ever lived, Scorsese. But it's just a movie that doesn't get recognition in his catalog, and it's After Hours, right? Starring oh, Griffin yeah, Dunn, yeah. the black comedy. I think it's an awesome movie. It's got great supporting cast, you know, like uh, Catherine O'Hara's in it, and uh, just just bunch of people. And it's all about this one guy's crazy ass night, mm -hmm. right? And he just runs into the looniest characters and he can't get home and <laughs> he's just trying to get home man it's just it's great it's really really good and it kind of makes you wish like uh you know scorsese did more stuff like this because he's really good at it did you ever want to say that uh, yeah i i saw it probably you know years ago on like a cinemax or an hbo um i think they just got released or announced for a 4k release if I'm not mistaken. Did it? So, Probably Criterion yeah. or something. I don't know. I probably, yeah. Uh, I thought I saw that recently. But nobody talks about it. Um, it's obviously different for him. It's not a biopic or it's not a crime drama or mafia movie or whatever. So it's definitely out of left field for him. And it's also, it kind of sucks because it wasn't a hit. It was a bomb. And it, it sucks that it was because this could have been, I can't think of any other movies where Griffin Dunn got to be the leading man. He's a character. He's a supporting guy. He's in, you know, My Girl. Uh, but, you know, you see him in a lot of stuff. But had this movie been a huge hit, maybe he'd be a leading man today and he'd have an even better career. So it's kind of too bad. Um, 
the next one, speaking of, we were talking about earlier movie movies like Stay Tuned, right? Big studio movies that just like you never heard of unless you came across it on Cinemax back in the day. Mm. But yet they had a studio backing. This is another one of those. And Charlie Sheen in Beyond the Law. You ever seen that? No, I, wanna I say, haven't. I want to say it was 1993. If you Google it, the cover's great because he's rocking an awesome mullet because he's it's a it's a classic story that's been told a lot oh yeah he, he's, a, cool. he's a cop that infiltrates a biker gang so he mm. he grows his hair out like a mullet like fucking renegade and he mm. gets into the gang uh because they're they're running drugs it's kind of like donnie brosco but with bikers and not italians right yeah and uh the the head of the spiker gang is michael madsen right it's oh, nice it's a good movie it's it's just it's a totally competent movie and it's like man why didn't why is this no one? Why has no one ever heard of this? And I, like I said, I can only assume it just came out with it came out next to some stiff competition. But it's a fun, it's a fun afternoon movie, man. It's just one of these movies you watch on TV and it's like, yeah, it's good. So I recommend watching it. It's a good time. Uh, I also, speaking of early 90s movies, I don't think people talk about this, but I'm putting it in here just because, not because it's like my favorite movie in the world or anything, but it it's a movie I saw a lot for some reason and i think it, it had it was a new line cinema movie it was on all the time nobody really talks about it but it's definitely the kind of movie you think people could talk about in the same breath of i don't know maybe movie like movies like heavy heavyweights or i don't know but remember that movie big girls don't cry they get even with griffin dunn griffin dunn's in that too he plays the dad the girl in it she's it's played by um kevin McAllister's sister you're not at all worried that he's, you know, home alone. You okay, know? I'm looking this up. No, I've the, never seen this. Oh, wow. They used to play on TBS all the time. It's got uh, Ben Savage as the youngest brother. It's even really? got, like, their own, like, Buzz-type sibling, little fat asshole. And basically, the main, the star, she, like I said, Hillary Wolf. she played one of Kevin's siblings on Home Alone, yeah, right? Yeah. She runs away. And she runs away from her family. Griffin Dunn's the dad, like I said. And she runs away. And it's just kind of a road movie, right? She runs away and she hitches all these rides with all these different people along mm -hmm. the way. And you kind of, it's like a Pee-wee's Big Adventure type thing. All the while her family's yeah. looking for. It's, it's, it's a New Line Cinema movie. It's PG-13. It's, it's totally just back in the day when they made a lot of those types of movies. And nobody talks about it. But. Yeah, Hillary Wolf, my mom's commenting on it too. I think you'd like it. I it's it's a good movie. I but I've also seen it a lot because it just reminds me. They used to play it. God, one of the one of the new line cinema cinema VHSs. I want to say Dumb and Dumber. Like it was always yeah. on the trailer, like for Dumb and Dumber is when I pop in that VHS. Um, but that's a good one. Another one I want to talk about too is a movie I saw fairly recently that was another one of these movies, like Beyond the Law, like no one talks about it because it came out 30 years ago and it wasn't a big hit 30 years ago. So it doesn't really have much life today, but that's the James Woods movie cop, dude. You ever seen that? Oh, James cop. Woods? I haven't seen it. No, dude. Good flick. Good flick. And he pretty much plays James Woods. He plays a sleazy ass cop. That's hunting down a serial killer. <laughs> and he's like a road cop playing by his own rules. Right. He's a total asshole. And it's great because he's arguably a bigger sleaze ball than the serial killer. <laughs> oh, really? Oh, yeah. His like, wife's leaving him. He's banging every chick left and right, dude, cheating on his wife. But he's looking for the serial killer. But he's a sleaze ball. He's a good guy, but a sleaze ball. He's so great. And he, okay. he thinks with his dick, dude. Like, <laughs> I'll have to watch like, this. He questions somebody, right, about the murder, and she has a big rack, and he like, ah, he'll start. <laughs> He gets more than information out of her if you get if you get my drift, dude. Yeah, yeah. It's yeah. it's a good flick, dude. I think you would like it too because it's it's sleazy, <laughs> and oh, he's awesome, dude. He's a gem. Oh, he is. He's fantastic. Um, this next one, my mom will appreciate if she's still listening. This is one that she introduced to to us in the mid '90s when it came out. But Frank and Jesse, <laughs> you ever seen this movie? No. Okay, so it's a biopic uh, off based off the James gang, Frank and Jesse James. And it's kind of like young guns in the sense that young guns takes a lot of liberties. It's not really a factual biopic, right? I mean, 
the assassination of Jesse James by the coward Robert Ford is probably more a little bit yeah. more of an accurate depiction, right? Where it's depression. It depicts Jesse James as what he was, a, a psychopath, guy that fucking killed people. Uh, whereas you watch a movie like Young Guns and they're having a great time. It's like a buddy comedy. Woo! He seems like a really cool guy. Like, man, I want to ride with the James gang, Millie Westevez and Christian Slater and all these idiots <laughs> having a good time. This movie's kind of like Young Guns, where it's clearly not factually accurate. It's clearly just they really cleaned it up and, and, and sugarcoated it, but I don't care. It's a fun movie. It stars uh, Rob Lowe as Jesse James oh, and God. Bill Paxton. He looks ridiculous, dude. Rob and Lowe. Bill Paxton, dude, <laughs> as Frank James. No, you should watch it, man. You should watch it. My mom always loved this movie, man. She'd watch this just as much as Harley Davis and the Marble Man. And, <laughs> and maybe it's a good way to just watch it so many damn times, but damn time. But it's, it's a good movie. I don't know. Like I said, if you're okay with just sort of that candy coated biopic that's just. More oh, yeah. fun and lighthearted. You know, it's funny. Like, and it's got Randy Travis, dude, is one of the oh, games. I gang. love Randy Travis. Yeah, he's. He, he's in, and uh, well, you wouldn't like him so much if you pulled him over drunk. He'd then he'd be an asshole to you. See that video on TMZ? You know who I am. I love his. I love his music, though, man. Uh, anyway, and it's got uh, who else? Alexis Arquette before he was a she. Oh yeah, yeah. I think he plays Charlie Ford. Uh, but yeah, it, it's something about it. But Bill Paxton's a pleasure. He hams it up like only he can do. It's it's pretty good. Um, so I recommend that. You should definitely put some of these in your list too. What's I am. Called? I'm adding to a watch list now. Yeah, definitely. And I want to say <sighs> Extra, dude. I've talked about Extra a little bit on this podcast. Extra is awesome, dude. I've never I, seen I, I just Extra. Wish me, you've seen it, right? I don't think so. Oh, God. It's so good. I wish more people talked about X Extro. It actually came out the same year as E.T., which is hilarious. Because, obviously, E.T. was the lovable extraterrestrial. Extro yeah. is the murderous raping <laughs> alien. This movie is so greasy and so slimy. And it, it was it's definitely budget. But they did so much with a small budget. And it's an English movie. It takes place in England. And basically... There's a boy and a mother and a dad disappears and dies or whatever. So, you know, she's widowed. And then suddenly, I don't remember how much time passes. The dad comes back. And what happens is Extro comes from outer space. And he re he reverse births out of a woman, like, after, like, the raping or whatever. It's fucking disturbing. And then, really? like, he's born again into this kid's dad. And it's like this human beings reverse bursting out of this woman and it's fucked up. And so this dad comes back into the picture. He's been dead a few years <laughs> and it's really extra dude. He is the creepiest alien dude. He's really creepy. Where you did you see it. this? At? Where'd you see this at? This oh, movie. we rented it from the public library back oh, in the day did? when I was a library back in the kid. I will say this though. This is also one of those flicks where, um, really bad sequels, especially extra three. Oh, like you can't finish it. It's so bad. Yeah. So forget all that. Dude, this first one, I want it on 4K so bad. They need to put it out on 4K. I think it got a solid Blu-ray release. I can't remember who put it out. I want to say it was the same people who put out um, The Changeling. I can't remember which weird, obscure boutique label did that, but not one of the big ones. Okay. But oh, I would love to have this on 4K. You should definitely add this to your list, Todd. I would love to. We did a comment. Did we do a commentary for this? I might have made Zach do a commentary for this. I think he did. I think yeah, he did. it's great, man. It's great. Um, I could have put something like what was it? The Watchers that had Corey Haim back in the day. Am I getting that right? That alien movie Watchers, with the dog. Yeah. And, mm -hmm. yeah, we rented that for the public library as well. Uh, okay, um, I'm gonna try and go through these fast. And my last ones. This is a modern movie. It, it was a Shutter original when it first aired. When I say Shutter original, like they didn't put up the money for it, but they secured the rights to make it a Shutter original. That was the only place you could watch it for a while. Uh, but I want to say the movies. I think maybe it's South African, if I'm not mistaken. But did you ever watch that movie Revenge? Uh, I don't believe so. Look up Revenge 2017. It was a Shutter original. Um, I imagine you could still watch it on Shutter because for a oh, while, okay, do that, okay, dude. I mean, I don't know about them now, but dude, Shutter for a while was on fire with the originals they were acquiring. Like a lot yeah. of them are really good. This movie's great, and it's not—it's nothing new. 
It's it's exactly what you think it is. It's a revenge movie. It's 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 what I spit on your grave started years ago. Mm -hmm. Uh, basically, I mean, there's a story around it, but all you need to know is this girl gets raped <laughs> by a bunch of fucking um uh, rich country club douchebag assholes, and she she gets hers, and it's just so enjoyable. And I remember that there's a write up. You could probably Google it. You'd find it. This actually got a a, a spot in like Vogue.com, and it made me sick, dude. It was like uh, someone reviewed this movie, I think, last year, and I read the headline as finally a horror movie for the Me Too generation. I'm like, well, what? First of all, this movie came out before Me Too. It came out in 2017. Yeah. I think that was before Me Too. But second of all, this is just I spit on your grave. We've always yeah, had these yeah. rape revenge movies. It's a yeah. rape revenge movie. It's not a fucking Me Too movie. People trying to it's it's really stupid, but the movie's good. You should watch it. A lot of fun. Not and bad. my last two that I'm gonna talk about, um, a couple of horror flicks. Gonna shine some light on some Asian horror. If you guys are big into Asian horror, you've seen these, right? Uh so first one <laughs> is a tale of two sisters. Have you seen this? No. All right, so you, you haven't you haven't watched too much of the Asian horror stuff, have you? No, I haven't. Okay, so I don't want to get my I don't want to get my facts wrong. So this is by Ji Woon Kim, and a lot some of these guys did bigger movies after. Like he did, I saw the devil. Did you watch that? Remember when that got talked yeah, about a lot? Yeah, mm -hmm. you watched that. Okay, so yeah, I love I saw good. the devil. Yeah. That's great. He did this flick, and it's just a it's a horror movie based on an old Japanese folklore, and it's just a good old fashioned ghost story, man. It's super creepy. Uh, really atmospheric. And that's what I like about a lot of those Japanese. Obviously, Takashi Miike aside, who's all about the show me and the gore. I like just the ghost stories and the atmosphere. And some of these guys do it better than anybody. And uh, I really like Tale of Two Sisters. And I that's one I would add to my list if I were you. And the last movie I'll talk about, also an Asian production. It's an anthology horror. Have you heard about Three Extremes? Mm -hmm. Okay. Three Extremes is fantastic. Uh, it's, it's got one movie from South Korea, one movie from China and one from Japan. And it's fantastic. Basically, uh, one of them is dumpling, which is probably the most famous one because they I've actually, seen, I've seen three extreme. Okay. I love it. Yeah. Dumpling. Yeah. They actually dumpling turned into good. a dumpling. They, they turned into a feature after the fact. They yeah. they made it to a feature, um, which I really like dumplings. I never saw the feature, but then it's got box the Takashi Miike, which is great. But I think the best one is uh, Cut Park Cham uh, Wook, and he did Old Boy, right? Mm -hmm. So and that was great. I don't know if you remember much about Cut. No, but, I don't. Oh, it's good. It's really really good. Anyway, I, that's that's really all I got. I I just kind of want to shine some light on some some Asian horror. But anyway, did I miss anything? Uh no, not really. I'm just trying. You, to had, think. you didn't have any kind of honorable mentions. You didn't have yeah, like I I do. I don't have the physical copies, but I'm I'm looking looking at my thing right now. So one movie came out in the '90s. Um, I fell in love with it. It's it's a lot of people probably think it's dumb, but um, it's right. Uh, it kicked off Sandra Bullock's career pretty much. Um, well, I guess I don't know this or Speed, but this is the net. Uh, the net from the net 1995. Came after. Okay, okay. The net was the follow-up when she became a marquee. Uh, now, the movie that came out right before Speed was um, Demolition Man. Yeah, yeah. And they came, I think they came out the same year, but it was Speed that came out after that blew her up. And then she got, like, the net, and she became a starring act on her own. But yeah, so the net. I Yeah, I always enjoyed that one. I don't know why. Um, I never watched it. It's kind of a lifetime type of movie. Now you look back at it like that. Uh, the other one I would say would be... Um, I watched this on, I think, television. Then I went back and watched it again on streaming service. Was uh, sometimes they come back. The Stephen King. Um, oh movie. yeah, I um, I didn't care for that one. I uh, just something about the feel of that movie I really enjoyed. Um, same director, of course, as Friday Thirteenth Part What Six. Yeah, it's okay, sucked, but yeah, it's it's it to me. There's there's definitely there's four tiers of Stephen King adaptation. There's amazing there's really good there's eh and there's just shit i'd say that's just an eh for me you know it's not like 
what what's the one with the rats late shift or whatever graveyard shift graveyard that shift fucking, yeah that's, that's yeah. bad like that's yeah. like a shit one yeah that's but. one i don't i don't care about either um i'm looking back at some of the action films uh that i really enjoyed of course best of the best um oh yeah dude. i'm slipping i should have talked about best of the best dude uh kickboxer 2 i enjoyed that one can I give? Can I just give the overall underrated award to the as an actor to Eric Roberts? I think he deserves the whole re- award personally. Oh yeah, absolutely. <laughs> I, th- awesome. I love I love Best of the Best, dude. And I, I don't think Best of the Best two ever came out on like DVD, did it? Or... You can't even find it to buy digitally. You can't even rent it. Yeah, that's that's so weird. Yeah. Um. But yeah, Best of the Best is great. So love that ponytail. Oh, the showdown was really good too. You saw showdown, right? Showdown, Little Tokyo. No, it's just called showdown. I don't. know. It's it's by the same. It's from the same directors. Best the best. Uh, let's see. No, I didn't see Bill, showdown. Billy Blanks. Oh, Ken, Ken Scott. I, I'm familiar with it. Yeah, 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 yeah. Now I remember. I haven't seen it, but I know what you're talking about. Yeah, I actually, <laughs> I actually enjoyed it. Yeah, I'll have to watch that. Yeah, I'll put that in my list. Keep them coming. Uh, the substitute movies, I think, are kind of. I always kind of. like Oh them. yeah, those are great, man. Yeah. The substitute with uh, yeah, Tom Berenger, dude. He's yeah. Great. And we always liked uh, the principal with Jim Belushi. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. That was a whole subgenre of films. The the tough ass teacher or principal or whatever taking down the crooked school, and it's always the principal that's crooked and running like it's like a it's like a prison movie with a crooked warden except it's the principal and they're always running the drugs or whatever you know oh yeah hell yeah showdown i'm gonna put this in my list yeah i i, I really enjoyed that um what else i don't i'm trying to i'm trying to find it obscure so diner i enjoyed diner um that's so funny Le- my Barry mom hated diner she recently watched she diner did? like She's like, I hate that movie. It's so boring. So much talking. It is talking, but I mean, you have so I like many it. good it's, actors it's on the great, screen, but it's, dude. It, it's a great script. Like the the dialogue is awesome in that movie. I think yeah. it's just, it's really good. It's uh, to me, it's it keeps you entertained, you know, because the dialogue is so. That's one of those flicks where if the dialogue wasn't good and the characters weren't good, it would be boring. It'd be fucking terrible because yeah. yeah, nothing happens in it. <laughs> but essentially, but anyway. I would like to give my honorable, honorable mention award to most underrated actor to uh, Mickey Rourke. I mean, like, I just think, I know he had his heyday, but people don't talk about his movies anymore. He's great in Diner. I love Pope of Greenwich Village with him and Eric Roberts. I love, um, obviously, Angel Heart and stuff like that. Yeah. Um, you know, uh, Year of the Dragon is good, too. Mm-hmm. He, he's got good flicks, man. Uh, yeah, that's that's all I can come up with right now. All right, that's good, mentions. that's good enough for me, man. Uh, and it's fun talking about movies because now I have some ideas of stuff I want to watch. Uh, but you know, and I, when I was going through and digging through some of these stuff to find some physical copies, it's so funny, man. Like, because I don't have everything on display because I only have so much space. I, I was like discovering movies I had, I forgot I had, like, oh yeah, I got this movie, I got this movie, I got this movie. Because some of these dude are gathering dust literally in a closet, like these movies oh, yeah. that I pulled out. Oh, it's like I forget I have it. Like I'm like, oh my god, Universal Soldier Day of Reckoning movie's awesome. Why am I not watching this? Um, when when stuff's out of sight, it really does become out of mind. Absolutely. And that's, the, that's why I I only have so much space, but like I try and keep, you know, I don't know. Some of the stuff is creme de la creme, and it should be out. But yeah, it sucks, man. But anyway, thank you guys for joining us. Uh, I'm not sure what we'll do next week. I think next week we could do a tier list. Um, do it. Do something really cool. <laughs> Maybe something a little bit more taxing on our brains. We'll figure it out. Um, uh, but in the meantime, please, once again, if you guys are new to this channel, please like it. Please subscribe it. Please leave a comment. Help us out with the algos. And please follow us on twitch.tv slash Revival House. And if you'd like to support us, uh, links are below anywhere you are. Uh, we have a Patreon. We have a Teespring. Anything and everything. That's all we got. We'll talk to you guys next week.